Hi there and hello, I'm Katie Nelson and I'm so happy to have you here today watching this tutorial. You may know me as Katie the Creative Lady and you can find me at katiethecreativelady.com which is my website and my blog and I love to focus on creativity and memory keeping. I even cover some topics like photography and food and cooking but my main focus is always how to live a creative life and how to document it. Today I'm going to talk about size tips for digital scrapbooking and I'm really excited to share some of this with you because these all, re all the tips today relate to questions I get a lot. So I'm hoping this will be helpful. I'm going to be using my pink personality collection which is new in my shop and, and so fun to create. I always include pocket cards in every collection and there are always a set of 12 three by fours and 12 six by fours. And you can use these of course on pocket pages or traditional layouts, lots of different uses for these. I'm gonna show you just a little walk through of them. Some of the filler cards could also be used as journaling cards. You'll see that pretty feminine uh, rose floral with just a translucent piece of digital paper over which works nice as a journaling background or just a filler card. Uh, the quote, the most beautiful thing you can wear is confidence by Blake Lively, so important. And my daughter, Riley, from the Creative Coop, drew those beads to represent the necklace on that card. Uh, of course, lots of pretty things and feminine things in this kit but a little bit of sass on the side and some fun as well. Oh my heck, like wow, totally crazy. That's t from the 80s, totally, right? I was a teenager in the 80s and I just, that came to my mind and I thought that would be so fun to use. Cute. How many of you have said that when you're shopping? I do that. <laughs> and fight like a girl. Girls are strong. Let's remember that. Let's document that. And that pink camo paper is one of my favorites. I turned that into a full-size paper for this set as well. Tickled pink might be one of the most famous sayings relating to the color pink. If you feel sad, add more lipstick and attack. That's a quote from Coco Chanel, and that's illustrated by my daughter again. You are beautiful. That pretty French looking bouquet with the you are beautiful underneath it is such a nice feminine touch. And then I love this confidence. Let's do this. Let's remember to add confidence to our pages. Hey girl, are you adding the story to your page? Be sure you're doing that. And girls are smart. Let's remember that and let's document that. Let's include that message on our girl pages for sure. And the pretty little pink blooms on that journaling card are another favorite of mine. There's the six by four sizes. And you can see that you have those same fun designs to use, just in a different orientation, which works really well for some pages there. The three by four might not work as well for you. Paper packs are my favorite to design, I have to admit. And I usually can go on and on when it comes to creating papers. And I love digital papers because you never run out. This French writing on the light pink goes so nice with the floral bouquets next to it for a really elegant look. And then the roses are a little more playful and pretty and more casual, but also still very elegant as well. And I really enjoy the watercolor misty look of this other pink paper. It's such a nice, subtle background. Pink plaid and pink polka dots. How about that for some pink fun? Pretty pink, I should say, so I keep the peas going. The tiny little pink hearts in a variety of little sizes gives this a playful feeling to that paper. And again, those tiny little blooms, just so sweet. Some rose leaves on the white and a raspberry gingham on 
with a little bit of a darker pink look to it. A simple pink stripe is always good to balance out some of these wilder prints and that pink camo is just wild and fun and I love it. The template set is like my others where it includes four 12 by 12 single page templates and four double page templates that are 24 by 12. And even if you don't use the double page templates, a lot of people like those for photo books. Even if you just work in single pages, seeing how I laid out the double pages can give you a lot of creative ideas. I take the guesswork out of putting together a page when I create a template for you to use. And I do all the measuring and the math for you and the shadowing. And all you have to do is drag your pictures on and clip them to the spaces. The stamps and brushes for this set will become even more versatile uh, because you can use them with any color and uh, vary their size and their effects. And if you're not sure how to do all these nifty tricks, be sure to look at my older tutorials and look at the one about stamps and brushes. And I'll be sure to link to that in the comments as well. When I uh, write the descriptions for my products, you'll see that you know I include how many papers come in the pack, but also this is an important thing to note for this tutorial. So all of my digital supplies are created in 300 DPI and JPEG format, unless they are stamps, which would be in the PNG format. And of course the templates are in a layered format in either TIFF or PSD. But this 300 DPI is really important. DPI means dots per inch, and the dots per inch relate to the dot density when printing. So a higher DPI is going to give you a better quality when it's printed out, whether you're printing out the paper to use in a hybrid project, or you're printing out a finished layout, or printing a photo book. That 300 DPI is a really good thing to look for in all digital supplies. Again, same thing on my pocket cards. We have the number of cards included, but also that 300 DPI JPEG format. If you are not familiar with how to do uh, general scrapbooking in Photoshop Elements, you'll want to check out these tutorials that, of mine that were posted last year, and I can link to those as well. But I did cover what size you should create your layouts in for the best results. And I always create my layouts as 12 by 12 with 300 DPI. And then even if I'm going to print them as a 10 by 10 or an 8 by 8 or a 6 by 6, I have options. It's always easier to size down than to size up. And 12 by 12 is a really good size for scrapbooking. You'll find that it's considered the standard and that's what I create my templates as. So if you use one of my templates, you already have a 12 by 12 canvas saved in 300 DPI. And here's one of my templates now. I did add some of these pictures, or some of these papers, excuse me, and clipped them already to the shapes below them so I could get a bit of a head start and show you on this. Now this photo spot right here, you're going to notice is a little bigger than a three by four or um, probably even a little bit bigger than a six by four because it's a little wider. So I'm going to take this photo and you can see that when I put this photo into the program that it is a very good size photo. There's no problem about this photo being the right size. Uh, I have more than enough size to work with. In fact, I'm going to shrink it down a little bit to fit this space. And anytime you enlarge a photo, always make sure you're dragging by those corners so you're not dragging and distorting it. You want to keep the proportions. And then once that's on top of the space that you want, you create your clipping mask. There are shortcuts to do that as well. I just use my mouse. And there you have your photo. So. It's nice, you can adjust that a little bit, but there's gonna be no problem printing that photo and having it look great because it's a very big, 
size photo. So I'm going to take the other photos and fit them into those smaller spaces. And you may look at that one and say, well, that's more of a square photo. How's that going to fit in that rectangle space? I am going to still size it so that it's about the right width. And I'm not going to worry about getting every little edge in the photo. It's okay to have it run off the edges a bit. Your mind can fill in the details, especially where it's not somebody's face. It's just some objects. And so I think that looks just fine. Now I'm going to use this other photo of my daughter. And you can also close down your photos once you put them in if you feel like your stack is getting a little messy, your, your photo bin, excuse me. It's up to you how you like to work. So I'm going to shrink down that photo using the corner again. And this time it's in back of the shape that I'm going to fill it with. And sometimes that's helpful as you're sizing something because you can kind of see where it's going to end up. And I am going to cut off part of her head. That sounds brutal, but I don't need that whole photo to be framed in there. I really just wanted to capture that she's looking down at her phone in her nicely made up face right after she had her makeover. And now you can see I'm putting in these six by four cards. Now they import as the real size is six by four. So that when I put them in, that's what a six by four would look like on a 12 by 12 page. But I don't have to keep it that big. I can shrink them down to fit those spaces. And that's just fine to do. So there, that would be the six by four size. Now I'm shrinking it down. I'm going to use it. This way you can fit more on your page. And you still, it's still big enough to see the detail on the card. Now remember, shrinking down always is great. You're going to keep your resolution with that. You're not going to lose any quality. When you enlarge something, that's when you have to be a little careful. And we'll talk about that here in just a minute. So as I finish my layout and add my journaling, you can see how it turned out. So I added the journaling and I love this page. It captures a fun stage of my daughter's life. And oh, you can see I accidentally cut that off. I will go back and fix that. <laughs> so that's always important to check your work after you save it too. Okay, here is another one of my templates. And again, that bigger photo space and some smaller spaces as well. Now, a lot of times when I am designing my templates, I will create them so that they could work with a photo or a card from my collection. And as I get ready to put the card in, I am, you know, trying to decide where I'm going to do it. I want to put it in that big space, and that's okay. You may think, wait, it's only a three by four card, and that's the size it would be if I kept it as its regular size. Now, it's okay to get them a little bit bigger. And I'm going to show you some tips for that later on. So you want to drag again by the corners. You wouldn't want to make it a full size of that layout because then you might start to lose a little bit of details. But this is probably just a little bit more than doubling the size, maybe pretty close to doubling it. And it will print up just fine. So you have a lot of flexibility when you're using these cards. Now, if you want to use them as printables, I would, I would buy the larger printable size. But to just en enlarge that picture or that card a little bit on that page will be just fine. And here's how the layout turned out, where th these are my nieces, my twin nieces, when they were born in 2006. And they're so cute definitely a lot of pink when you have twin baby girls. So I love how that turned out. And I love that that card is a little bit bigger and bolder that acts as my title for the page and a nice focal point. I'm going to show you share with you a really cool resource. This is on the website nationsphotolab.com. And there is a pixel chart. And I did not know about this till recently. 
But I've always known, I've been taught since I became a digital scrapbooker and hung out in forums, that your layout size should be 12 by 12, and that means 3,600 pixels by 3,600. That, when you have those numbers, that will give you the 300 DPI. So this is a great resource to check, and I'm going to show you a little bit more how you can use that later on. Now, my printables come in these four sizes. This is the Happy Planner size, and 8 by 10, of course, is a very standard size for a frame. 8.5 by 11, also, there are frames in that size, and this is great if you want to put it in a notebook or a note as a notebook cover, uh, print it you know, on regular size letter paper in the U.S., so that is a nice size. And then 11 by 14 is larger for if you want a little more of a statement piece to hang or display somewhere. So on all of these sizes, you can print them a little bit bigger, but you're going to have to check the cropping. The um, If you're wanting to get just a little bit bigger than 8 by 10, or eight and a half by, I would just try to work with these sizes when you can, but say you really want something bigger. Say you want a 16 by 20. I've had several people email me and say, do you think if I printed this as 16 by 20, it would be okay? So I've tried it and it, it is okay. I wouldn't, I wouldn't push it too much further than that. And I'm gonna show you why. Okay, well, we're gonna start with I'm going to just create a 16 by 20 canvas. Again, I'm gonna use the, thir the 300 um, setting. And just for so a way to make it easier to see, I'm going to fill it with the color, just so you can kind of see it a little bit better against the uh, image I'm going to pull in here. So I'm going to get one of my 11 by 14 bowl and put it right there on the 16 by 20 canvas. I can use the corners and drag it and it does a pretty good job of filling that canvas. And the design is centered enough and it doesn't run off the edges so I can even cheat it a little bit and make it just a little bit larger than the canvas that I needed to because there is just a little bit of a different aspect ratio. Okay, I'm going to take the dimensions of the 11 by 14, and then I'm going to check on this Nation's Photo Lab site. And again, I'm going to verify that those are, that's the amount of pixels needed for the very best quality. That's how I have the print set for those. But say I wanted to print that same one as a 16 by 20. Well, you can see that I need a little bit bigger file for the very best quality, but I'm way ahead of what I need for the minimum requirement. So it's going to turn out pretty good. Now, if I tried to go up to a 24 by 30, I'm way off. I'm just barely over the minimum. So that's kind of a good way to see how close you are to um, if you want to enlarge something. For best results, you're gonna to wanna to print those printables at the, in the sizes they come in, but you can cheat it a little bit. Some of the designs, if they go off the edge or they're a little, uh, they go all the way to the edge, it might be a little trickier to get your aspect ratio correct. So be confident and with your skills and play around with the different sizes. Don't be scared of doing that and just have a lot of fun and I hope that this will help you have a little bit more uh, confidence and daring to try some different things on your layouts and enjoy. Thanks again for watching. I hope you will remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel and give me a like, a thumbs up.